One of the Navy's most difficult and time-consuming positions is commanding an aircraft carrier. Aircraft carriers are warships with over 5,000 sailors on board. Because of the vast number of people and the numerous operational tasks that take place on a carrier, there is a necessity for someone to supervise and direct these operations. Like the mayor in a city, the captain provides the essential leadership and organizational structure to ensure the smooth operation of this floating city. How does a day in the life of a captain on board an aircraft carrier typically go? The captain oversees the ship's functioning and is assisted by a team of senior naval officers. These experienced officers, known as department heads, lead the numerous departments responsible for the operations necessary to fulfill the ship's mission. The carrier's captain in the Navy is considered a line officer and is therefore entrusted with the intensive authority over his ship. He is responsible for the overall performance of his ship as well as that of the crew, and as a result he is granted extensive authority. Ultimately, he is the authority that makes the final choice for his command. The idea that a ship's captain could have such extensive responsibilities and ultimate accountability date back to the earliest days of command at sea when a ship and its crew were frequently cut off from any higher authority for extended periods and the ship's captain was solely responsible for the safety and success of his command. Although today's technology makes it possible for a contemporary carrier to maintain a strong connection with higher authorities, the captain's obligations regarding his crew, the ship, and the mission have not altered significantly. Because a carrier is always in full operation, the captains of carriers rarely get any rest. Important activities are always going on at all hours of the day and night. The movement, assembly, and testing of ordnance, the purification and storage of fuel, the organization of the flight deck, the mission planning, the safe navigation of the ship, the preparation of food, and training and maintenance of important ship and aircraft systems are ongoing tasks that take place around the clock. During flight operations, the captain can typically be found on the bridge directly involved in the mechanics of positioning and preparing the ship for launch and recovery of aircraft, ensuring the safe navigation of the ship and supervising flight deck operations. In addition, the captain is responsible for ensuring that all aircraft are recovered safely. Before and after flight operations, he will have meetings with department heads, take part in daily briefings with the embarked flag officer and the carrier aircraft group, and complete various administrative obligations resulting from the size of the carrier's command. However, other activities generally demand even more of the captain's time, making the captain's day anything from 18 to 20 hours long. Flight operations typically take 12 hours each day. He is stationed on the bridge in case any strange event occurs that puts an increased strain on the ship. The navigation through straits or other places that limit the carrier's capacity to maneuver, approaching or leaving ports, and often occurring evolutions all call for the captain to be present on the bridge. Due to the round-the-clock nature of the carrier operations, commanders develop the skill of falling asleep whenever they can. In the 100-year history of carrier operations, only a handful of the many thousands of Navy aviators have ever held the position of carrier commander. Even though it requires extensive aviation expertise, several unusual qualifying duty assignments and highly specialized training, it is nevertheless one of the most difficult and rewarding positions in the Navy. Numerous instances throughout the course of a day highlight how important the training, expertise, and judgment of the carrier's captain are to the safe and efficient completion of the task assigned to the carrier as well as the nation's overall objectives. The crew recognize him for his unique function as the commanding officer, and as a result, they refer to him as the captain. Even though there are several other 06 grade officers aboard the ship, there is no confusion when a crew member uses the title the captain. The captain and his crew have mutual regard for one another. The responsibilities of a captain require a broad range of knowledge and competence. These obligations include navigation, the operation of the ship's equipment, business functions, and the assignment and supervision of jobs performed by all crew members. In addition, they are responsible for ensuring that all the equipment receives the appropriate maintenance and complies with all environmental standards. 
Keeping frequent logs throughout the crews and managing crew members on the ship are less crucial than their other responsibilities, but they are nonetheless important. To maintain a formal record of each expedition and the ship's activities during the journey, the ship captain must meticulously document and examine nearly everything that takes place on board the vessel. How is an aircraft carrier captain appointed? Officers assigned to serve as captains undergo a rigorous selection process. In 1926, Congress of the United States issued laws requiring an aircraft carrier's captain and deputy captain to be either Navy pilots or Naval air crew. Only an outstanding commanding officer with the position of commander or aviation wing captain is qualified to serve as captain or deputy captain. The requirements for becoming the captain of a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier in the United States Navy are much more stringent. The prospective captain of a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier is required to complete training in nuclear technology for 16 months and serve as the deputy squadron commander of the flight squadron for more than 30 to 36 months. After that, then he must spend the next two to three years working as an officer in charge of combat and administrative matters on board an aircraft carrier fueled by nuclear reactors before being considered for the position. In most cases, the deputy captain is promoted to the position of captain, and the chiefs of the various departments on an aircraft carrier are eligible for promotion to the position of deputy captain. Each year, the United States Navy will put up between five and ten candidates for the position of aircraft carrier captain. These applicants will undergo a test where they will demonstrate their knowledge of various topics, including operational rules, flight, naval technology, aircraft carrier performance, and shipborne weapons. To be eligible, they need to pass this test. After three years of professional training and internship, in the absence of vacancies, he can be appointed as captain as long as he follows the processes of the letter. The title of colonel is given to all of the captains of American aircraft carriers, and exceptional aircraft carrier captains can be promoted to the position of commander of the aircraft carrier formation and given the rank of rear admiral. The British Navy, in contrast to the United States Navy, bases its guidelines for choosing the captain of an aircraft carrier on the training of the captains of the destroyers currently in service, with the ratio of pick one from three serving as the deciding factor in the selection process. During the training term of two years, if it is discovered that the candidate is unable to perform adequately or is unwilling to continue training, one person will be dismissed and the selection process will continue from the two people who are still standing. The captain of a British aircraft carrier is generally appointed as a senior officer of the fleet command or even a deputy chief of the staff of the Navy after the end of his term. That will be all for today's video. Thank you for staying tuned. Let us know what you think of the topic in the comments. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.